Developers have uh, always been looking for uh, new ways to monetize their apps. Building applications require a lot of time and energy, which is why we also need a good strategy when it comes to app monetization. Most of apps these days have uh, either an in-app purchase system implemented or they display ads to their users in order to make a revenue from it. But is there another way that we can keep our users engaged and uh, earn money at the same time? The answer is yes. I have recently found one platform that uh, might look promising. It's called GameZop. I'm going to explain you what it is, how it works, ways that you can uh, monetize your applications with it, and uh, show you how to implement that uh, system in practice in your uh, Kotlin multi-platform application for both Android and iOS. Stay tuned. GameZop is a platform that provides a library of uh, more than 250 popular HTML games that you can easily integrate in your apps. The business model is uh, pretty straightforward. Users play game and have fun, GameZop displays the uh, ads at the specific moments in the game, and you earn money. The longer user spends time uh, playing those games, the more you can earn. From uh, what I have seen, games on this uh, platform are uh, genuinely fun and engaging, which is the exact uh, thing that is needed to keep your users uh, hooked and uh, maximize your earnings. One important thing here to note is the timing of uh, ads being shown. So you don't have to worry about your users uh, getting bombarded with uh, unlimited amount of ads. Instead, those uh, ads will be placed at a specific uh, moments or events in your game. For example, ads will be displayed uh, when the game starts, when a user completes a level, or when the game ends. So those ads are strategically placed in your game to allow smooth and enjoyable game experience while maximizing your earnings. So how much can you actually earn with this GameZop platform? GameZop works with a 50-50 revenue sharing model, and they provide not just the games, but also a ways to track your revenue, an option to save a user's progress, and even fetch the user's score as well which can be useful if you are planning to reward your users for playing games. That way you can provide some in-app rewards to your users in return for their time spent on playing those games. Finally, before I show you how to integrate this system in your app, let me show you how to get started. So, the first thing that you need to do is to go to their website called business.gamesop.com. From there, you have a button that says uh, Get Started. After you click that button, a new page will appear where uh, you need to submit uh, your uh, details in that form. At the moment of uh, recording this video, there is no a straightforward way to create that account by yourself. Instead, you need to submit those details and uh, wait for uh, one of those account managers to reach you back. In most cases, you're going to receive a feedback in a day or two in a form of an email, and you will also receive uh, one link in that email that uh, will allow you to create uh, the new password for your account. I have already sent uh, feedback to them, and I have told them that they should actually improve this uh, whole onboarding process to allow users to create accounts uh, on their own. But nevertheless, this is the way of doing things for now. After you receive uh, credentials to log into your account, you will be able to check out the account dashboard. From the dashboard, you have a uh, quite comprehensive analytics where you can check out and see how much you have earned from those uh, ads, or from those games, actually. Now, there are two important concepts that you need to get familiar with. There is the property ID and the account ID. I'm going to explain you what the property ID actually is, but before I do, I need to also mention that uh, GameZop is a platform that uh, offers not just the games, but also quizzes, astrology information, news, and other. And the property ID is a unique ID, which is uh, tied to that specific kind of a content that you select. For example, in my own dashboard, I have uh, two different property IDs for a GameZop. GameZop is basically an API that allows me to integrate uh, games in my app. Also, an important thing here to note is that uh, you cannot create those uh, property IDs by yourself. Instead, you will get uh, your own uh, dedicated account manager, which uh, is in charge of creating those uh, property IDs for you. Now, this uh, first uh, property ID that I have in my dashboard is uh, used to access uh, the API for uh, all games, while this uh, second property ID is uh, used to access the API, which allows me to access a specific game from this library. So don't worry, I'm going to show you how it all works in practice. So this is one uh, demo project that uh, I have prepared for the demonstration purpose. It has uh, one simple campy library, which uh, I have created. 
This small library allows us to launch the web browser within our application. So for the Android target, this library uses uh, custom Chrome tabs, and for the iOS, it just launches a new web browser. So why it is important for you to know that this library uses uh, custom Chrome tabs for Android target? Well, because the official documentation for GameZop says that uh, you should always use uh, custom Chrome tabs instead of a simple web view, because it will make your overall gaming experience better and you will earn uh, more revenue with it. So without further ado, let's see how uh, all of this uh, works in practice. Okay, so this is our demo project, right? Here we have uh, only one dependency for that browser. Uh, in our app Kotlin file, uh, we have the main screen composable, and that screen contains a simple column with uh, one uh, clickable image. So this uh, image right here represents uh, one uh, banner that uh, I have grabbed from their uh, creative library. So if you uh, recall, let me just uh, open up their uh, dashboard for a moment. As you can see here, if I uh, go to our uh, dashboard from here, uh, we have uh, one uh, tab here that says uh, Creative Library. So this Creative Library offers uh, quite a lot of different uh, resources that you can integrate in your app. Uh, from the filters, you can choose uh, what kind of uh, API you are using. So you have a Games Up, which is uh, made for games. We have a Quiz Up, which is made for uh, quizzes. Then we have a News, uh, Astrology Information, Crickets, and other events. In this case, we can select the Games Up because we are working with the games. Uh, we can choose uh, the type, for example, banner. Uh, the size of the banner can be, as you can see, we have a lot of different options to choose from. Maybe, let's say, 180. At the moment, for uh, those uh, filters that I have chosen, we have uh, three different banners, and they really look engaging, right? So in this case, I have chose uh, this one. It's just with a different size, okay? So uh, you can just click download and then import this uh, resource into your uh, common main. Now let's go back to our project. So as you can see in our Compose resource uh, drawable directory, I have already added one banner. And this uh, banner has the size of a 9020 by a 1080. So if I now run this application, you will be able to see that banner. Let me just here uh, open up this Android emulator for now. Uh, by the way, I'm using here uh, two different uh, URLs. So first I'm going to show you this uh, first one. And uh, this uh, first one basically represents uh, my unique uh, property ID. So as you can see, this uh, URL consists of my property ID .play.gamesop.com. So with this URL, uh, we will be able to access uh, all games from a GamesOp, okay? Let me just uh, launch this application uh, once more. Okay, so there it is. This is our banner. And if I now click on this banner, then a web browser should open up uh, within our application with that specific URL, right? And from here, we can browse uh, different kind of games. Uh, of course, uh, we can see already some uh, ads, but don't worry about that. And for now, uh, I really like this uh, Tower Buster game, so I'm going to choose that one. As soon as we click on that, as you can see, we are uh, getting one ad uh, here as well at the beginning. We can just close that for now and wait until this game is uh, actually loaded, okay? Then there is another ad. We can easily skip that, so it's only five seconds. And from here we can start uh, playing the game. So click play button. We can also play here the sound or not. We can uh, even enter the full screen mode as well, so it's uh, really uh, convenient. Let's now play this game. So as you can see, uh, we need to crush this little tower. Uh, before we uh, reach that little uh, green or uh, red circle, which is circling around. So if we somehow uh, hit this uh, circle or this um, red uh, square, then the game is over, right? So we can now, of course, watch an ad to uh, continue where we left off, or we can just uh, skip and start over. Of course, if we choose to uh, continue where we left off, we need to watch another ad. We can skip this ad if we want. There we go. And we can continue where we left. So there are a lot of different games here that we can play, and uh, all of those games are really interesting and uh, fun. So I'm going to now um, go back. Uh, let's close this web browser for now. So this was the first approach. So in this case, I have used the first uh, property ID from my dashboard, and this um, property ID was used to access uh, all games. But now I have a different kind of a URL with a different kind of uh, property ID, which is my second property ID, and with this ID, I'm able to access a specific game in that uh, GamesOp library, right? So in this case, we're not going to display uh, to our users a whole library of games. We're going to focus only on a single game. 
In this case, as you can see, uh, there is a specific um, game ID which uh, will lead us to that same tower game, which I have shown you earlier. And there is also, of course, uh, a place where you can check uh, different kind of uh, games uh, their IDs and stuff, so there is a library that you can check out. Now, about that uh, library, so uh, you can visit this uh, official documentation on uh, how to integrate uh, via uh, All Games API, and here you will find uh, a one URL that you can visit to actually see uh, various different uh, games and their uh, specific uh, code IDs that you can uh, integrate uh, in your project. So, for example, I'm going to copy now uh, this uh, URL. We can even use the language uh, parameter as well, but for now I'm going to just use the ID parameter. Uh, let's open up our uh, tab here, paste it, and for our ID I will specify my own uh, property ID, so um, this one. So after I uh, open up this uh, endpoint, you will notice uh, a huge list uh, of uh, different games, right? If you want to see this uh, whole uh, API response uh, properly formatted, uh, then I suggest you to open up this uh, JSON beautifier and editor and just uh, edit here as a Chrome extension, right? And that's how you're going to be able to, uh, to see this um, API response uh, properly formatted. So each and every game here uh, contains a specific uh, code that you can integrate in that uh, URL that we already have in our Android Studio project. Plus, there are a couple of more different uh, properties for each and every game, like uh, the assets. So we can also check the cover, the thumbnail, the square thumbnail, and other different uh, information like the description and so on. Uh, by the way, if you uh, don't like this uh, whole uh, API response in a JSON format, we can also easily convert this um, a JSON response into the uh, Excel document. So uh, we can also visit uh, the website, which is called uh, products.espose.app. And uh, here I'm going to just um, select this uh, from URL button, paste that uh, same URL with my own uh, product ID, right? And let's click load. After that, uh, this uh, converter will basically convert this into the uh, format that we specify right here. So we can even use the docx or a PDF, so it's up to you. Uh, I will choose this uh, first one and uh, click convert. After a few seconds, you're going to receive here an option to uh, download this uh, file or even view it in the web browser. I will just uh, open up this uh, viewer uh, to see this uh, same API response in an in a Excel spreadsheet, right? As you can see right here, uh, we also have those uh, same games, so each and every game has its own unique code that we can use to integrate uh, with our own uh, API. As you can see right here, we also get our own uh, custom URL which uh, consists of that uh, same property ID and that uh, game as well. You can, of course, use here this uh, search option to search for a specific game, for example, uh, Tower uh, Blaster, I think. I just click uh, Next. Okay, so Tower uh, Buster, I think, so Buster. Click uh, Next, there you go. We have now found that uh, game quite easily. And from there, we can choose uh, this uh, URL and uh, integrate it in our uh, project with basically one click. We also have those information like the, the actual uh, thumbnail image. Uh, we can just uh, copy, for example, this uh, uh, thumbnail image and uh, paste it here. As you can see, that's the thumbnail image of this uh, specific game that we are uh, searching for. And there you go. So that's how you can use this uh, All Games uh, API to fetch uh, the list of uh, all available games that are available in a games app. By the way, uh, you can see one uh, query parameter here that says a sub. So, uh, why do we need this sub? Well, the sub uh, basically means that we need to enter here a unique uh, identifier for uh, each and every user. And with this uh, query parameter, we will be able to save a user's progress, right? So, if a user launches this uh, link right here and starts playing the game, then uh, their uh, in-game progress will be saved uh, automatically. So, the only thing that we need to do here is uh, add our user's unique ID right here as a sub parameter, and that's it. Let me show you here now. Let's launch this application all over again. Uh, let's open up this uh, URL, of course. As you can see now, we have uh, immediately navigated to that specific game. So we are no longer uh, going through that um, whole game library. Instead, we are playing only a single game. And of course, in this case, you can choose a different banner for that specific game so that uh, your users can know uh, which game they will play. Okay, so now let's play this game. Um, all over again. As you can see, we are now currently at level 1. 
Let's try to reach, uh, for example, maybe second level or uh, third level and see whether our, games, uh, our game progress will be saved. Let's just um, try to finish this uh, level uh, properly. Okay, there we go, perfect. Let's now click play and continue to our second level. There we go, this is our uh, level two. We can, uh, I failed. Let's also click uh, free to watch an ad, for example. So you have uh, five seconds to, to skip the ad, which is also uh, convenient. We're now currently at level two. As you can see, we are continuing uh, from where we left off. Perfect. So now, as you can see, we have a timer, so we need to complete this uh, game uh, in uh, 10 seconds, which can be really hard, actually. And they're basically making us to, uh, to watch those ads again if we want to continue playing the game, which is uh, really uh, good for our revenue. And now we are currently at level 3. So I'm going to now stop and just go back here. I'm going to close this uh, whole window. And I'm going to uh, launch the app once again. So in this case, we are also uh, running this um, same URL with the same uh, user uh, sub or user ID for this uh, sub parameter and now when we launch this game once again uh, you will see that uh, our game progress uh, will be remembered which is great so uh, there is uh, basically no any kind of a configuration that we need to do in, in our code uh, we just need to pass a unique user identifier here as a sub parameter and it will work out of the box and there you go. So that's how easily you can uh, integrate this uh, whole uh, system in your app. So basically with uh, just one line of code. This uh, platform offers uh, quite a few more features that you can check out in their documentation, of course. And when it comes to the analytics, uh, you might not see those results right away. Instead, you might need to wait a few hours to actually see those, um, uh, those revenue of yours. Share your thoughts in the comment section down below and let me know if you have already tried this platform before. Other than that, feel free to uh, like this video if you find it helpful, of course. And uh, thank you for watching.